Hi, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I'm an AWS Solutions Architect. Welcome to this video in the .NET Learning Series. Are you using the Python-based AWS CLI to deploy and manage your AWS Cloud resources today? Have you ever wished that you could perform these same automation tasks from an object-oriented shell instead of a text-based shell like Bash or ZSH? Since 2006, systems administrators, engineers, and developers have enjoyed the rich, object-oriented shell experience with PowerShell on the Microsoft Windows platform. AWS customers have also enjoyed the benefits of an object-oriented shell since the availability of the AWS tools for PowerShell, also simply known as the AWS PowerShell module. However, this powerful shell isn't just limited to Windows users any longer. In January of 2018, Microsoft released the first generally available version of PowerShell Core Edition. PowerShell Core Edition is an open source and cross-platform edition of PowerShell that runs on top of the cross-platform .NET Core framework. Since the alpha version of PowerShell Core was first announced back in August of 2016, the AWS PowerShell module has had nearly full support for it. Through the use of objects, PowerShell reduces the amount of work that's required to construct complex inputs and parse command output. Instead, you can spend more time focusing on your business logic. Unlike the traditional Bash or ZSH shell environment, PowerShell offers built-in utilities to sort, filter, and even group objects together. If required, you can even convert objects to and from different common serialization formats, such as JSON and CSV, without any third-party dependencies. Even though objects are PowerShell first-class citizens, so to speak, you still have the ability to perform text parsing through regular expressions. Now that we've reviewed some of the essential features of PowerShell, let's discuss how you can get started with PowerShell and AWS automation today. Now we're going to switch over to our web browser and take a look at the PowerShell project on GitHub. Using your web browser of choice, head over to the official PowerShell Core open source repository on GitHub, visit the Releases tab, and download the latest version of the PowerShell Core package for your operating system. You can see that PowerShell Core supports a variety of different operating systems, including Linux, OS X, and Windows. After you've installed PowerShell Core, you can launch the shell using the executable name pwsh instead of powershell.exe, as on the Windows platform. Once you've launched PowerShell, installing the AWS PowerShell module is easy. PowerShell has a public-facing NuGet-based module gallery known as the PowerShell gallery, similar to other languages. For example, c -sharp developers typically use NuGet for hosting .NET packages, whereas JavaScript developers might use the Node Package Manager, or NPM. To interact with the PowerShell gallery, PowerShell includes a small module called PowerShell Get. This module exports an array of commands that allows you to install modules, uninstall modules, and publish new modules. To install the AWS PowerShell module, simply run this install module command. So we'll type the install module command, specify the name parameter, type the module name, which is AWS PowerShell.NET Core, specify the scope parameter of current user, and that instructs PowerShell to install the module to our current user's home directory instead of the all users directory that requires pseudo permissions, and we'll just hit enter. The module should only take a few moments to install from the PowerShell gallery. Once it's installed, you don't have to manually import the module using the import module command, thanks to PowerShell, PowerShell's module auto-loading feature. With the AWS PowerShell module installed, it's time to set up your credentials so that you can access your AWS account's resources. If you've already set up your AWS credentials file manually or have been using it with the AWS CLI, you can most likely skip this step. If you haven't already created an AWS credentials file, you can set it up using the following PowerShell command. The command name is set AWS credential, and then we'll specify a store as, which is basically a profile name that we'll use to reference this access key ID. Then we'll specify our access key, and finally, our secret key. You can generate these credentials from the Identity and Access Management service inside the AWS Management Console. Like the other SDKs, the AWS PowerShell module will automatically look for the credentials profile named default in your home directory under the .aws hidden folder. 
With PowerShell installed, along with the AWS PowerShell module and your credentials file configured, you're now ready to start exploring the PowerShell module and performing automation tasks against your AWS Cloud resources. The AWS PowerShell module contains a helpful command called get AWS commandlet name. This command will search for PowerShell commands that invoke a specific AWS API or interact with the AWS service more generally. For example, we'll call get AWS commandlet name dash service lambda. And this will return a list of all the lambda related PowerShell commands. Also, we'll call get AWS commandlet name match with regex bucket. And this is going to return any command that matches the name bucket. And then finally, if we want to get a specific PowerShell command for a specific AWS API, such as put object, we can use the API operation parameter on the get AWS commandlet name command. If you've already deployed some AWS Lambda functions, try calling this command to obtain a list of them from your AWS account. So we'll type get lm function list. And as you can see, I get back a list of AWS Lambda functions from my AWS account. You can also use the native group object command in PowerShell to group objects together based on a common property. This makes it easy to run simple reports against your AWS resources and get a count back. In the AWS Lambda example, try grouping them together based on the configured memory size or runtime. So in this example, we're going to call get lm function list and pipe that into the group object command, and then specify that we want to group the objects together based on the runtime property. As you can see, I have Lambda functions from Python 3.6, Python 2.7, as well as Node.js. You can also filter an array of objects down to the objects that you care about. PowerShell's where object command provides a generic interface to filter your objects based on certain criteria. For example, let's say that we wanted to find a list of AWS Lambda functions that matches a particular runtime. So we'll call the get lm function list command again to retrieve a list of our Lambda functions, and then we'll pipe it into this where object command and specify a filter script containing the criteria returning either a true or false value that matches the criteria we want to filter on. As you can see, we've filtered our list of Lambda functions down to only the ones that match the Python 3.6 runtime. If you need to perform an action against many resources at once, you can use the PowerShell pipeline. For example, let's say that you wanted to delete all of your AWS Lambda functions that used the old Python 2.7 runtime. The following command would achieve that. So we'll call the get lm function list again with where object, and we're going to change our runtime to Python 2.7. Finally, we're going to pipe those objects into the remove lm function command. And if we hit Enter, you'll see that all of those Lambda functions that match our criteria are going to get de deleted. If a command doesn't exist perf to perform the operation you're expecting, you can instead pipe your array of objects into the built-in for each object command in PowerShell. For example, you could create a log entry for an array of objects using this command. So we'll get a list of our Lambda functions once again. And then we'll pipe it into the for each object command and specify a useful log entry, like the function named x has a y memory size. And then we'll substitute our function name and our memory size. So that's going to iterate over each Lambda function and generate a log entry for it. Before we wrap up, let's look at the JSON conversion commands in PowerShell. You can use this command to find related JSON commands in the shell environment. So we'll call it get command with a name of star JSON star, just as wildcards. And as you can see, we've got the convert to and convert from JSON commands that are built directly into PowerShell. If you're starting to worry that these commands look too long, remember that you get IntelliSense, also known as tab completion, for both command and parameter names out of the box make sure that you use this feature to your advantage. There are also built-in aliases for many commands that can aid while typing out commands interactively. For example, the where object command has a default alias of question mark. The for each object command has a default alias of percent sign. One of the key advantages to PowerShell is that the language reads naturally like plain English. 
Although it may be different from what you're used to with other languages, I think you'll find that this is useful longer term, especially in shared code repositories. This video was a brief introduction to PowerShell that barely even scratches the surface of its depth. As you can see, PowerShell is a powerful shell for both interactive use as well as creating complex applications. I encourage you to install PowerShell and spend some time learning about its unique approach to interactive command line usage. With its powerful, easy to understand commands, data processing features, and cloud integration with AWS, I'm confident that it will help you be more productive in your work, regardless of what role you hold in your organization. Thanks for watching this video in the .NET Learning Series, and look for future videos on AWS and PowerShell development.